you guys remember dividing, not equals, well let's say negative 7 divided by the square root of 3, and the person that just got up. Do you remember what we do if we had a rational number on the bottom? Do you remember what we did when we had a square root of an irrational number on the bottom? Do you remember what we did to solve this, to simplify this? Yeah, well, we're going to square it, but there's a special way we're going to square it here next. You have to multiply the whole thing by square root of 3. Almost the whole thing, but a little bit more. You have to. Say so, so what you say? Yes, yes. I thought, like, multiply by the conjugate? Almost. We're getting there. Um, so, you are a step ahead. Yes? I about the square root of 3 over 1. Okay. So, a couple problems come up. And actually, multiplying by the square root of 3 over 1 would be the same thing as multiplying by the square root of 3. And you guys came up with the thing. The main important thing is you have to. Let me actually just give you guys an example. If I say, um, four thirds, and I multiply everything by just two, right? That equals eight thirds. Is four thirds the same as eight thirds? No. No. What about if I multiply by two over two, and I get eight six? Is eight six the same as four thirds? Yes. Yes. All right. So I'm not into changing the problem. All right. When I want to solve this problem, I don't want to change the value of the fraction. All I want to do is rewrite it so there's no square root on the bottom. So I have to make sure, just like I multiply 2 on top and bottom, you have to multiply the square root of 3 on the top and bottom. Because then what you get is the square root of 3 squared, which is 3, and you get negative 7 times square root of 3. All right? That was for irrational numbers. Okay? Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Yes, 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 absolutely. Okay. Now, how did we get i to be a number? We had to multiply it by... I'm going to get i to i, right? Because if we multiply it times i over i, i times i is i squared, which is negative, negative one. 1. So you say negative 7i over i squared, which equals negative 7i over negative 1, which equals a positive 7i. All right? So when you have an i on the denominator, you have to make sure you multiply not just the top or the bottom, you have to make sure you multiply both to keep it an equivalent, what we we'll call it an equivalent fraction. Damn, man, I wish I had more time. I just wanted you guys to do some work today.